G'day guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoy today's episode, and if you do, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and if you're feeling extra saucy, hit the bell notification so you don't miss an upload. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Cheers. Posted by user, Afraid Strawberry, titled... How do I, 30 male, come back from yelling at my pregnant wife, 26 female? I've been with my wife for four years. I have a five-year-old from a previous relationship. My five-year-old, L, is from my first long-term relationship during college. We split shortly after her birth, as my then-partner admitted to being unfaithful and not being ready to start a family. My daughter loves my wife. They're inseparable. My ex does not have much to do with my daughter or myself, except cause the occasional drama. She didn't want any custody or visitation time, so my wife is her mother for all intents and purposes. Now my wife is almost 8 months pregnant, and she's shut me out of the entire pregnancy but refuses to admit anything's wrong. I feel completely ignored and hurt. When we first learned that she was pregnant, she told me it while I was making breakfast, and of course, I was elated. However, since it was an unplanned pregnancy, I asked her how she was feeling at first. She began smiling and crying about how excited she is. I picked her up, gave her a million kisses, and told her that I was so excited to have a baby too, and what a wonderful mother she would be. All good, right? She went all out to announce to everyone else. Balloons and boxes, t-shirts and best big sister mugs. I assumed the casual announcement with me is because she wanted my feelings on growing our family before celebrating. However, when her sister asked about how I liked my box, my wife quickly said that he didn't get one as this isn't his first rodeo. Oh, no, don't do that to him. What do you mean? Oh, excluding your husband. That's gonna, that's gonna go well. It was like pulling teeth to get her to let me go to the ultrasound appointments. She didn't want me to miss work, didn't want to interrupt Elle's routine, excuse after excuse. When it came to listening to the heartbeat, my wife instantly started crying happy tears. The tech was telling her how strong the heartbeat was, how precious our little one was, etc. I was feeling a bit emotional and cleared my throat to prevent crying. The tech said, Aw, Dad, isn't that sound beautiful? My wife immediately said, this isn't his first child, it's not that special for him. I immediately said that this is one of the most important moments of my life, I can't think of anything more special. The atmosphere was clearly awkward afterwards. Stop downplaying his role in this. Do you hate your husband? (laughs) Sorry, I didn't even want this dickhead here at the uh, appointment. I know he's half of this child, but um, I hate him. Another thing that bothered me... I heard Elle and my wife's mum laughing in the living area. I was in the kitchen making dinner. When I walked in and asked what the fuss was about, Elle was touching my wife's stomach and was laughing with excitement that the baby was moving, and it would be so cute. My wife let my daughter and mother-in-law feel the baby move before me. I was hurt, but simply said how happy I was. Later that night, my wife was poking her belly and laughing. I asked her to feel as well, and she said, You've already felt Elle move as a baby. What can be better than that? She was the cutest baby ever. She's felt pretty poorly throughout her pregnancy, but she refuses to let me help her. If I bring her a snack and drink, she offers it to our daughter instead. If I try and rub her feet or legs, she asks me to play with our daughter so she doesn't feel like she's being replaced or ignored. I simply do not ignore my daughter. We have bonding time, I'm an active parent, but I want to love my wife. She can hardly eat, but when I asked her what I can prepare for her, it's... Oh, whatever Elle wants. We went to the zoo with Elle, and my wife started feeling bad. She had cramps and was considering going to the hospital, severe nausea and dizziness. I carry her to a bench nearby, and she began to cry, saying that she can't even stand up. I told her to just let me call an ambulance or I'll carry you to the car and drive you. She said she didn't want to ruin Elle's trip and we didn't even make it to the Avery, which was Elle's favourite part. I said I wasn't leaving when she asked me to continue to go through the zoo with Elle. We sat for a while until her dad showed up. She didn't even tell me that he was coming and he took her to the doctor. I was shocked and followed them with Elle. 
When we arrived, Elle was upset about missing the Avery and pouting. At that point, the health of my wife and unborn child were my concern. I really didn't care that Elle was upset. My wife was irate that I made Elle miss out. For another example, we were watching Elle play in a local kid's sport. I asked her, Do you think our kid will be athletic, artistic, enjoy science or math? And she said, This is Elle's moment. We shouldn't make it about someone who isn't even here yet. Elle was on the field, we were sitting in the stands. We had both waved to her, held up a sign for her, everything. I just wanted to talk about our baby. When her bump was really showing, she would always show it off to anyone who wanted to look. Her family, friends, siblings, etc. Do you want to see my bump? I'm huge. I'm so excited. I can't believe that it's only X more weeks. They all touch her bump, talk to it, etc. Her parents come and read or tell back in the day stories. They go to the beach, a thousand bump pictures posted on her friend's social media accounts, so ready to be an honorary auntie, her sister. Wife puts the B in bump and beautiful. If we go out together, she wears the loosest clothes so that I don't see it. I'll even see her pull her shirt down when she sees me come into the room. She sat on me the other day after being playful in bed. Her bump was right in my face. I ran my hands up it and said that you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. You are already a great mum to Elle. I can't wait to see you as our family grows. This was one of the first times I was really able to feel her bump, so I rested my hand there and said that I love you so much already. I'm so excited to meet you. I hope you have your mum's eyes. She moved off me and said, I know ex-partner had a bigger bump than me. I bet it was fun seeing Elle move all the time. You don't have to act like you care. I know you've done this before. I said I don't think about it that way. Elle's special, but this is a completely new and different special because it was with her, and our baby was someone completely new and special. She began to leave the room, and I could see her shoulders shake from crying. I'm 100% positive that she's not cheating, nor has she ever, but I just cannot wrap my head around why she doesn't want me to be happy about this. The rest of the time is completely normal as long as I don't mention the baby. She's affectionate, initiates intimacy, brags about what a good husband I am and how great I've made this pregnancy. We plan for our future, have date nights, everything else. Unfortunately, we had a fight where I snapped. I had a break between clients at work, so I went to a local baby store and got a lot of things off her list and Pinterest board. I came home and surprised her with flowers, a prenatal massage certificate, and her favorite food, as well as the baby items. She seemed grateful, but when I came home, the items were no longer there. She said she returned it to buy L stuff, as she was going to feel left out. I lost it. I cried for the first time in our marriage and yelled that having a child with her was the worst mistake I've ever made, that at least my deadbeat ex at least gave me the chance to know my unborn child, that I didn't care about the baby because she wouldn't even let me bond with it. I do care, I have since she told me, and that I hoped that she was as miserable as she made me and that she better be prepared for a custody dispute. She's a stay-at-home mother for Elle. She simply said, I know you don't care about the baby, but I will die before you take the baby from me. What? I have begged her to let me interact with her slash our baby. I asked her if her therapist had any insight on why she was being like this. And she said no, that she isn't doing anything. I told her what I said above, and she said that I had those experiences already, so it shouldn't matter. I asked her if the baby was mine. I know it is, I was just being mean, and she threw her phone at me and said, yes, go through it. I'll do a paternity test, I'll do whatever you need. I just called her parents and asked them to come to our house as we're having a disagreement and went to a hotel. I do not want to stress her or our unborn child, and I really want to repair this, but I truly do not know how. I'm staying at an Airbnb for now until we can figure this out, but I truly do not know what to do. 
I miss her like crazy, and I can't even begin to understand why she wants to behave this way. I've apologized for what I said, but I can't take back what I said, and I worry about when our baby is born, if she'll even want to be a family with me, or let me have anything to do with our baby. I spoke with a mutual friend who says that she's very distraught and says she can't be a single mum, loves me, but her actions prove the opposite time and time again even when I beg for change. In the comments, Individual Foxlike says, You two need couples therapy immediately. You should have started it right after her first or second comment. You've known for months that things weren't right. Also, call her OB and explain what's going on. Ask them to make a record for her shift in behavior and stress that she's never done anything like this before getting pregnant. OP replies, I should've. I stupidly attributed it to hormones and other issues that come with pregnancy. She was sick for most of her pregnancy, and for a lot of it actually lost weight, was constantly hungry but couldn't eat, and became very body conscious. She's doing much better now, and is a healthy weight, and I genuinely thought that it would get better. It's much easier to see in hindsight that the first few comments were deeper than that. Don't be so hard on yourself. You couldn't have known that it would escalate to this, but do take action now so that you can both fix this. You absolutely can. Your love for each other is so plain to read. I'm certain that you can get this back on track and start enjoying this together. I really don't know why she could be shutting you out, other than protecting herself by telling herself that it's not special to you because that's what she fears. But it sounds like clinical anxiety, because she has no reason to fear that until the argument. You've done everything you could to reassure her. I so hope this works out for you all. OP replies, I love her dearly. It hurts to see the comments and messages about her or I being horrible. We are both making mistakes. My comments, more of a mistake than anything she has ever done, but I do love her, and I don't want to think that she has a master plot to keep my baby away. This change was like night and day for me. She always talked about the future and how great of a sister that Elle will be. I think there may be a few things at play here. The first is the obvious that pregnancy hormones do wildly strange things to a woman that can make them act completely irrationally, even throughout the pregnancy. This all needs to be talked through with a doctor. Second, and obviously this is a guess, do you think that maybe she has some resentment or disappointment that her not being able to provide you with your first child is manifesting this behavior? I mean, yes, she has been a strong motherly figure to your daughter, but could she be feeling some kind of way about all of that? I know that sounds irrational too, but as a woman, I could understand that. And it's a tough thing to admit and express in a healthy way, combined with all of the hormones and emotions of an actual pregnancy happening. You reached a breaking point and she has this wall up to you. Maybe it's time for a third party to help intervene. She's not acknowledging what she's putting you through and is instead treating you like you don't exist in her life. She needs to articulate what's going on, but I suspect that if there's not a therapist in the mix, she won't be fully honest. I would also add that sometimes it sounds like she's overcompensating with Elle, so maybe she's scared that she won't be able to see the two children equally once her biological child arrives. Her thought processes definitely are not healthy, and it'd be interesting to know if she's telling her therapist any of this. You need sessions together. This is definitely out of my ballpark, but taking the advice of those comments, I think that working with a therapist and getting her to break that wall with you is the go in this situation. There's obviously things that she's not saying to you. Communication has completely broken down between the two of you in regards to the baby, and you have taken all of that frustration out on her. And even after taking your frustration out on her, she's still not communicating what's wrong. You know, you've given a last ditch attempt to be like, what have I done wrong? You're making me really upset. I don't know what I've done wrong. Why do you keep stonewalling me? What is going on? Why have you changed so suddenly? You've let it out in an obviously very mean way, but it's still on her to communicate with you what is going on. If she wants to, you either have to have a very honest conversation with this person or get a therapist involved who can help break through that wall. Otherwise, I'm not entirely sure. How do you get someone to talk to you that doesn't want to talk? It's a very good question. And now, on to the updates. So it's been about a month since I posted, 
This is a bit long because so many kind Redditors reached out and gave me advice and shared their experiences and asked for an update. After I posted and stewed for a little while and had a couple of drinks, I called my father-in-law. He and my wife are very close and I respect his opinion. He's been married for a very long time and seems to have a happy marriage and has good relationships all around with his family. I didn't specify what issues we were having, but he was over at my house while I was staying in an Airbnb, so it was no secret we were having problems. He has more of a traditional marriage, and at some point he asked what I had to lose by putting pressure on her to talk. I said I feared that I would push her away more, and he pretty much told me that I was living in a separate house than my pregnant wife, freaking out about a potential divorce. What did I have to lose? He advised me to be a man and come back to my house and lay it on the line. I told him that I'd be coming over the next day. They asked if they could take Elle to buy some sparklers for the upcoming holiday and spend the night at their house. I agreed, and when I went to my house the next day, I came in with flowers and stuff to make dinner. My wife asked what I was doing there, to which I replied that I lived there and would like to sit down and talk. I gave a long apology for my actions and words. When I finished, I said it was her turn to tell me what was going on. She tried to claim nothing, that everything was okay. After a while, I said my heart's broken, that we've been through some tough things together, fought for each other, and now you sit here and lie to my face. We both sat there and she cried for about 30 minutes until eventually she said she felt like our relationship would end if she would be honest. I said I would hear her out no matter what. She admitted it was hard that this would be her first kid and not mine. She didn't think it would bother her and it didn't until she was pregnant and that she laid in bed at night thinking if my ex would have wanted to raise Elle, we still would be a family together and she wouldn't matter. She expressed that seeing me emotional about our baby or wanting to touch the bump or treat her made her think of me and my ex and how I already did all of those things that she was excited to do with me. Near the beginning of her pregnancy, she had told a close friend that she couldn't wait to have a baby with her soulmates, and her friend replied that she didn't think soulmates had other children or baby mamas, and that it was two people meant only for each other. She was very upset, and asked if I thought that we were soulmates like she did. She described herself and our unborn child as my sloppy seconds family that no one grew up dreaming of having kids with multiple different people, that she was just the substitute when my family and I didn't work out. She also shared that she had found some old images of my ex on social media and couldn't stop comparing her pregnant body. She feared that the baby wouldn't be an equal to Elle in my eyes. It worried her when I would ask what she thought the baby would be like, that what if the baby was disabled or didn't like to do the things that we enjoyed as a family or the baby and Elle didn't like each other. She said at one point she found herself wishing that I never had Elle so she wouldn't have to worry as much, and that is when she knew that she had to really put in the extra effort to maintain a relationship with Elle. She feared that between work and Elle, I wouldn't have time and wouldn't bond with a baby like in the articles she read online where fathers didn't bond with their children until they were able to do things with the family. When I did try and bond with a baby, she worried the baby wouldn't live up to Elle. I have never been shy about saying how much being a father means to me and how raising Elle has been the highlight of my life, along with marrying my wife and now having our child together. She said it was initially what made her confident in marrying me and excited to have a big family with me, but now constantly wondered if her pregnancy and this baby would be a highlight or a burden for me, because the stress is the same, but the newness wasn't. And then what if a newborn and then toddler wouldn't be as interesting to me as Elle, who was capable of doing activities? She showed me a million articles of different men explaining they didn't bond with their children until four plus years old. She also showed me the videos where people say things they did with their first kid and then get more relaxed as they have more children. She said it freaked her out because it was clear that people stopped caring the more children they had. She said that there were times she felt like she was ruining our family and coming between me and Elle. For example, at the zoo, she said she cried on the way to the hospital. She was afraid that Elle would hate her and resent the baby for cutting our zoo time short, and that I would be upset that I was spending my time off work at the hospital instead of doing activities that we planned with Elle. While I work, Elle and my wife spend a lot of time out of the house. 
like at libraries, local parks, etc. One of their activities is biking together, and we bike together on weekends as well. We have lots of local trails, but due to her pregnancy, she's not been able to. We've been doing more indoor activities. My wife said that when I'm at work, Elle kept saying that she hated her because she didn't get to go on her new bike as often anymore. I said I'd discuss it with her because that's unacceptable. My wife asked me not to since there would be so many changes soon for Elle and it hurt her because she missed biking together as well. A couple of months ago, my wife asked me and Elle if we wanted to read stories together. Elle chose the first story I read, and my wife chose the second, which was her favourite childhood story, for me to read to the baby and Elle, since it helps promote brain activity and help with bonding. After that, I read another book of Elle's choosing. While I was at work the next day, Elle ripped the pages out of the book that my wife chose. She said she was going to tell me, but her friend, the same friend who says that we aren't soulmates, said I would think that she was making it up and that it seemed to her that she was trying to become between me and Elle. I asked her why she didn't tell me any of this, and she explained that she didn't feel comfortable telling me because her thoughts didn't even make sense to her. She wanted me to spend more time with Elle so she didn't feel left out or jealous, and when I did, she felt upset that I wasn't spending more time with her. She loves Elle, but she wishes that we had our first kid together. She wants me around, but also feels upset and guilty when I give her or our unborn baby attention. She said she feared that I would think that she was trying to come between me and Elle when she wasn't. By the time I realized something was truly wrong and started to ask what was wrong, if she needed therapy, etc., she said she realized she was acting poorly but didn't want to admit to herself that she missed out on a lot with me and doubled down as it was hard to face that she made her fears reality by pushing me away and not letting me care, and that she couldn't just start over, that her first pregnancy was a somewhat bad experience because of her own actions. At this point, I realized how terrible I'd been. I apologized for making her feel like she couldn't come to me about anything, she said when she researched her feelings, she found a bunch of forums where people were calling the poster evil for their feelings about their stepchild, oh not that subreddit, come on, and feared that I would feel the same. She said if I had told her I felt about Elle the way she felt about Elle, that it would make her angry and upset, so she couldn't see how I wouldn't be. We both cried for a long time, I tried to reassure her. I told her how much I loved Elle, how excited that I was, that she was the family of my choosing and my soulmate, that the universe knew that Elle and I needed her, which is why circumstances allowed us to be family. She apologized for the way that she treated me and said she wanted to make it right. She said she wanted to apologize when I was beginning to have my meltdown, but was surprised when I yelled and realized she might have messed up beyond repair to get that reaction from me. We continued to cry for a long, long time, and she asked if I wanted to feel the baby. Of course, I said yes, and we cried even more. It turned out to be a great evening. I made us dinner, and we laughed about how I was so stressed that I went to Reddit for advice. She wanted to read the post, and cried again when she did. I reassured her that we could move past this, and she said she felt horrible as she read some of the comments from women in her shoes. It was a bit awkward the first week after so many months of tension. I knew that things were turning around when she woke me up by whispering, baby wants blueberry pancakes that Saturday. I don't think I've ever prepared pancakes so fast. <laughs> I couldn't keep the smile off my face. We ended up going to a pool party a few days later, and she let me choose her swimsuit, which is a big deal for someone who only wore baggy clothes around me. We took family pictures, and the universe is clearly on my side, because on the way home, she asked me to feel her belly, and the baby was hiccuping, something that I'd never felt before, and that was a first that we could share together. She's even let me help her when she's sick without making an excuse about Elle. I've learned that when she comes and puts her back to me and lifts her arms up, that that's my cue to lift her belly up. I now spend a lot of time rubbing and talking to her belly, and rubbing her feet, legs, back, shoulders, hips. <laughs> She's sore everywhere at this point. The first 500 times it made me cry. It has been such a relief to be involved. I never thought that being tasked with acquiring the most random food items at 2am would be a great time for me, but it is. It still sucks that I missed out on a lot. I think it sucks for her too. 
She gets emotional and says that a weight has been lifted off of her and things are so much easier, and she's upset that she didn't talk to me sooner. I've been working to fix some of my wife's guilt. I realized there was a lot of simple fixes. For example, I was able to go to my local bike shop and get a pull-behind trailer. Now, I pull her in that, and she can use a small fan and ice packs, and Elle can ride her bike. I've taken off work so I can spend more time with them both. We're all in therapy, and thankfully Elle's therapist is continuing to say that she is securely attached to the both of us, enjoys the time that we spend together, is coping very well, as some of her behavior was to do with another situation which we both resolved, and she's excited to be a big sister. My wife was terrified that maybe she could sense her attitude shift, but her therapist said that she only has one complaint about my wife that she forgot her candy one time, and then it took 32 whole minutes for the store to deliver it. My wife is in therapy, working to overcome the negative feelings that she has. That's pretty much where we are now. We're getting very close to baby time, and working hard to finish preparing. My wife still needs reassurance, and there are a lot of times that she brings up my ex, and I've found bringing up our firsts helps. For example, she'll ask about certain things and how it was for me. I'll say I don't want to talk about that and steer the conversation to us. Do you remember our first house? First vacation? First kiss? First date? Remember that time blah blah blah? It made me fall more in love with you. Do you remember when you and Elle made me blah? <laughs> That's still one of my most prized possessions. It upsets me that my wife suffered for just so long. I believe saying it out loud took a lot of power away from her feelings. I think most people know how badly it feels when you have thoughts that don't feel like your own when you're going through a mentally taxing time. I really should have stood up for our relationship and her mental health way sooner. I accepted her brushing me off for far too long when I should have realized that she needed help. I appreciate everyone who reached out or offered advice. I posted this in detail with my wife's permission. She hopes that it helps someone out there struggling with the same feelings that she felt. In the comments, A stereotypically says, I wonder, how is your wife moving forward regarding her friend? It seems like she didn't even consider having these insecurities before she had a snake in her ear. OP says, We have disinvited this friend from our home. It's hard to cut her out as she's part of my wife's larger friend group. My wife was unsure as this friend has went through some hard things lately. However, recently my wife hosted a girls' night and her friends were arriving as I was leaving. I told her she looked beautiful and wished them a good time. But when I arrived back, my wife told me that this friend said in front of the whole group that I may be saying kind things to her now, but after some changes in birth that I won't describe here, I will be after her. My wife said that that was an unkind and untrue thing to say and she said that it was a joke. I made it very clear to my wife that I didn't want her around my children as we're in an emotionally vulnerable time and this person clearly does not wish us well and she agreed. That friend is evil as hell. She knew the wife had serious insecurities and plays on them every chance she gets. Wife and the couple need to seriously continue individual and couples therapy. I get the wife's fears, even people who go on to have multiple children often have the fear that they won't be able to love them like the first one or the older ones will hate the younger, but she's letting it and her friends attempt to get in the middle of her marriage destroying her family. I was getting so annoyed reading the first post and some of the second. My first thought was to ditch that friend, that she is the evil little shit on the wife's shoulder whispering poison into her ear. Yeah, I tried combing the initial post to see if there was any mention of the friend, but it doesn't really appear that there is, besides her family, friends, siblings, etc. Do you want to see my bump? I'm huge, I'm so excited. I can't believe it's only X more weeks. There was really nothing malicious at all in that post that would point to the friend being the source of this poison. Unless I'm missing something, that came completely out of left field. And I'm glad that having a heart-to-heart -heart worked in this situation and that she was willing to have that conversation. That was a really insanely difficult situation to navigate. And if you guys can make it through that, I feel like you can make it through anything at this point. Because I imagine for so many relationships, that is a complete breaking point argument that you can't come back from. Though, 
That being said, I haven't been married, so I, I can't take my own word for that. I don't have any experience with that. It really just seems like one of those arguments that someone that's divorced will tell you, yep, we had a fight and that's what broke it and we couldn't come back from there. But regardless, I'm so happy that it turned out the way that it did and that the friend is slowly being phased out of her, their life. To say, oh, he's happy with her now, but he's going to hate his wife after the pregnancy. Holy shit. You are a vile piece of work, friend. That is a terrible thing to say to someone. I can't wait for the day that you guys completely kick her out of your lives, if that's possible. Obviously, with a larger friend group, you know, there's a lot of politics involved. But I hope that when you break this story to the friend group, they see, you know, <laughs> who's right and wrong in this situation. Shit. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!